alfalfa seed. And so when you don't see people criticize genetically modified food and organisms that can literally threaten total havoc on the planet, crop failures, topsoil depleted, when those issues aren't addressed, you should be very, very suspicious of their agenda. Pole shift threatens to cause weather chaos, Paul Joseph Watson. According to some experts, the world's weather is about to get even more chaotic as a result of natural climate change that we can do absolutely nothing to prevent. And even though global warming alarmists may exploit the consequences to advance their own political agenda, paying a carbon tax to Al Gore will not lessen the impact of a potentially catastrophic magnetic polar shift. In layman's terms, the most apocalyptic outcome of a polar shift would come as a result of the poles flipping with the South Pole becoming the North Pole and vice versa. And during that point in time, and we're going to talk more about this next week because Bob Felix is coming on outside the box for a full hour to get deeper into this. He has, a, he has an expansive, deep, well-researched understanding of our planet's geological history. And so when that takes place, in between the reverse hill, you're going to have North popping up in multiple parts on the planet. Massive confusion, and the South Pole as well. And one of the things that I was thinking about earlier this week, you, you've heard me report on the tensions in the South China Sea between North Korea and South Korea, the United States, China, and uh, you can also add Russia and India into the mix. Is it just simply the theater of war, the staging of the next world war, which I talk extensively about? Is it solely just that, or could there be other influences outside of that that are causing the tensions to escalate? In other words, if we're already in the middle of a polar shift, and they're not being completely honest with us as to what's really going on and how extensive it really is, it would make sense to me for there to be confusion and ships to end up in waters where they're not normally supposed to be. And for some sort of a conflict to arise out, out of that confusion. As, oh my God, where are we? We're all of a sudden over here, and we thought we were going over here. And more and more, I start thinking about places like the Bermuda Triangle. And I start wondering if places like this, through this shift, if this is actually taking place, and as serious as the science is indicating, are we going to see more places on the planet where people really aren't sure where they are and how they're going to get back to where they came from? All very important information to look at. Now, every half a million years, according to the geolog geological record, we go through some sort of a magnetic reversal or a polar shift. The last time it's happened, it's been 780,000 years, which means by 380,000 years, we're actually overdue. Mike Adams writes, and his website is naturalnews.com, quote, in between these flips, the magnetic field can become quite weak and chaotic, causing turbulence in the field, which can effectively cause weaker gaps in the magnetosphere. These magnetic gaps or weaknesses can allow outside influences that normally would not penetrate the magnetosphere to reach deep into, the, into uh, our planet, theoretically all the way down to where the birds fly at very low altitude, adds Adams, making a case that pole shifts are to blame for recent mass bird die-offs. However, it's it's important to note that the process of reversal in the Earth's magnetic field can take about 5,000 years to be completed. This isn't going to happen overnight, which is why Frentic claims that it is part of a some preordained 2012 mine apocalypse are in the same league as hysteria about Planet X, writes Paul Joseph Watson. This is his opinion. Again, we really don't know what's taking place or what the truth is about Planet X, but I think in the next couple years, a lot of questions will be answered and we'll be dealing with reality from that point on. The more likely scenario is that the ever-changing tug of war between the sun and the Earth's electromagnetic fields will continue to cause significant but not apocalyptic storms like those recently witnessed in Australia and the United States, and that alarmists will continue to exploit such events to push their completely discredited global warming dogma. The fact that the planet's northern magnetic pole is drifting slowly but steadily towards Russia is causing airports to adjust. We talked about this on several sh shows. Uh, the coordinates of their runways so they match up with sensitive airplane instruments. The consequences of geomagnetic movement in the poles is undoubtedly uh, an important issue and will have a direct impact on our lives. However, given the leverage, the level of coverage, and in some quarters, outright hysteria being afforded uh, to a complete pole reversal event that is less probable than a cataclysmic asteroid strike, we're more worried about the threats to the environment that are already unfolding on the planet and not by some unknown outside threat that we cannot even do anything to prevent it. 
Anyway, the impact of chemtrails, the poisoning of our water supply with sodium fluoride, heavy metals, drugs, and other harmful chemicals, along with the threat posed by the industrial rollout of genetically modified crops should be a far greater and more immediate concern. However, since the planet is so sensitive to the behavior of the sun and how it affects the poles, don't be surprised when global warming alarmists quickly exploit extreme weather events that are uh, attributable to natural causes and blame them on human CO2 emissions while assuring that the only solution is to pay Al Gore and his globalist cronies billions of dollars in carbon taxes. And so we're going to continue with our report and let you know about some of the things taking place on Earth. Now let's go back to graphic 38 and reflect upon this. And I want you to get ready for this because this is going to get even more interesting. Uh, you've heard about massive snowstorms in the middle of the United States. I mean, snow just taller than me. Uh, you know, eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet, massive images all over the web. I mean, these snow trucks, I've never seen snow trucks this large. They literally go in and they, they suck up the air this way and they blow it out vertically. I've never seen a truck like that. Uh, but that's what they're having to use to clear the roads. This is the headline that we're looking at right now. 100 degree warm up ahead for some states next week. A major prolonged warm up is finally on the way for the eastern two thirds of the nation next week. After a record shattering frigid morning with lows well before zero, well below zero in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas Thursday, temperatures could jump nearly 100 degrees in some areas by, last, by next week. I wanna talk about Thursday. Why is Thursday uh, of this last week significant? And today being the 13th, um, I believe we are talking about the 10th. And what we saw on the 10th is news of a coronal mass ejection um, pointed towards Earth, heading towards Earth. And as we've talked about numerous times on the show, the impact of solar flares upon our Earth's weather patterns, geomagnetic storms, and of course, I highly encourage everyone out there that's having strange dreams, phenomena, and perhaps you might believe you're becoming more telepathic, more synchronicities happening. Google geomagnetic storms tied to lucid dreaming, more lucid dreaming. Again, we also have magnetic fields to our own body, and that which made the sun made us. And so we are, as humans, biological humans, involved in this shift, which I think could directly be tied to the idea of a conscious shift or a shift of awareness as we go through these changes on the earth. That's why it's very important to maintain your composure and be aware of when solar flares are taking place so you don't find yourself blowing up at your partner, at your business partners. Let me just say this, and I'm not going to give any more details. There's been a couple circumstances, uh, examples in the last several months where someone that, uh, someone that I'm involved in projects with uh, very intimately um, tends to lose composure and cuss me out um, unjustly, usually when these solar flares are taking place. And I'm getting to see firsthand just how psychotic some individuals are when these changes are taking place on the Earth. Which is why I feel it's very important to research the reports that came out of Russia 50 years ago, 70 years ago, 80 years ago. So many people are just focused on the United States as if, you know, our you-know-what doesn't stink and we're the only scientists in the world. No. Long before NASA, Russia, Russian scientists were looking at effects of the sun and its connection to cycles of war, world war, revolution. Around the same time, the sun is kicking off its energy, coming down, raining down upon planet Earth. And then you saw Egypt. Massive revolts and revolution and calls for change, a shift, a new direction, change, some sort of tide shifting. And then we see major shifts in nature. Could they be tied together? Absolutely. Do the, do the powers that be, are they aware of these potential changes coming upon the planet that could be affecting our consciousness in positive ways? Absolutely. 
Why are there so many poisons in the water, poisons in the food? Why are they trying to modify our DNA structure as we go through these shifts and changes? When the research is lined up, when you look at the patterns, the story tells itself. And I need to say nothing. Nothing at all. The information, the pattern speaks for itself. We have a potential for massive flooding in the next several weeks. With these temperatures shooting up through the roof, I'll report the rest of this in a, in a minute, but going back to graphic 38, massive warmth following this. And the report continues, a change in the overall weather pattern will allow milder air to spread through this region as well as the rest of the plains, Midwest and parts of the east over the next few days. A more substantial warm-up will follow next week in the areas of Oklahoma, Kansas and Arkansas where temperatures drop between 20 degrees and 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit Thursday morning. Highs in the 60s are in the forecast for late next week. In some areas, temperatures can even make a run for 70 degrees. This would be close to a 100 degree warm up from Thursday's morning frigid lows. 100 degrees going from negative 30 all the way to 70 in a matter of a week. The warmer air will also help to melt the record setting snowstorm that dropped up to uh, one to two feet of snow in those areas Tuesday into Wednesday of this week. Going from that report into the next one, Worst winter in decades threatens North Korean grain production. A news report says that North Korea is suffering the harshest winter in decades, raising concerns about food production this year. The pro Pyongyang, Japan-based newspaper reported Tuesday that temperatures in North Korea have stayed below zero for 40 consecutive days this winter, the longest cold snap since 1945. 1945, World War II, it was also solar maximum. There were also many earthquakes during that time on the planet in 1945. The world was also at war. It was a shift of a new direction for our country and the planet at that time, post-45 world. 9-11 also took place during uh, massive solar activity. You also saw 2003, the invasion of Iraq, also increased solar activity. Also Mars was in close proximity to Earth at that time, around the time of the invasion. In the next one, drought in, North, in northern China alarms leaders. A severe drought in northern China has badly damaged the winter wheat crop and left the ground very dry for the spring planting, planting fueling inflation and alarming China's leaders. President Hu Jintao and Prime Minister Wen Jiabu separately toured uh, drought-stricken regions this week and have called for an all-out efforts to address the effects of water shortages on agriculture. And you have other, other factors as well playing into this drought problem. For example, the cost of water is through the roof in China, and so you have an irrigation issue. There are also other factors to why the price of food is going to go up. It's called, uh, it's called speculation. All these bankster gang gangsters knowing what's going to take place, putting their money in food. And we reported several months ago about the guy in Europe that bought all of Europe's cocoa production. And we mentioned last month on the show, Bill, go down the graphics where the other China articles were that I left there from several weeks ago at the bottom. And we're gonna bring up uh, the report about China buying uh, billions worth of soybeans from the United States. This is taking place right now. Um, there's also other reports that I have not brought today uh, pertaining to them. Um, um, they're gonna be buying a lot more timber uh, from the Pacific Northwest in the coming year. Kitsopper is going on a trade mission to China. We'll get into that later on. We have some additional details about Kitsopper and the Chinese. Let's see, do we have that? Because um, this is very interesting because it's a part of this overall pattern. You also see, you're also going to see more uh, buy-ups of sugar uh, and other staples. And China also is in a position to be dominant over the U.S. militarily. Of course, this is by design. How else could it happen? Uh, of the rare earth minerals so that are essential to the U.S. military, to fighter jets. We're going to be flying Chinese fighter jets 